In this video, we are discussing how to solve second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. And so our aim is to solve any differential equation of this form here, where the coefficients a, b, and c are just any numbers. So we know from general theory that since this is a second order homogeneous linear equation, that to solve the equation, the general solution here is just going to be a linear combination C1 plus C2 Y2, where these two functions Y1 and Y2 are just any two linearly independent solutions to this equation. So in order to solve this equation, we, we should just find two linearly independent solutions Y1 and Y2. That's all we need to do. And then we can solve the whole equation by forming this general linear combination. Okay, so how to solve this equation? Well, what we're going to do, so to solve this equation here, we're going to try a specific solution. We're going to, we're going to guess that y is equal to e to the rx, and then we're going to try and solve for the, the r in this expression here. Okay, so if this is our guess, that y is equal to e to the rx, then we can just see that the derivative will be r e to the rx, and the second derivative will just be r squared e to the rx. And so when we substitute uh, these, that substitute y and its derivatives into the differential equation, we just get the second derivative here, and the first derivative here, and then just the function y here. And so this uh, adding up to zero gives us this equation here. And now uh, you can see why the trick is valid, because we can factor out the e to the rx here. This e to the rx is a common factor in each of these terms. So we could factor it out, and then because it's positive, we can cancel it off because we have zero at the end. And so we're actually just left with a very simple equation, our favorite equation, the quadratic equation. Okay, and the main thing to see here is that this is completely uh, reversible, so that e to the rx is a solution to our differential equation if and only if r, the number r, is a root of a certain quadratic equation, namely this one. Okay, so in, in order to find solutions to these kinds of equations, it's enough to solve certain quadratic equations. So let's see how this works on an example. Let's try and solve this equation here. So from our technique, we know that um, to solve this equation, let's try y is equal to e to the rx. And then we'll see that if I substitute this into the equation, we're going to get r squared e to the rx minus e to the rx is equal to 0. And this is just the same thing as saying that r squared minus 1 equals 0. And then you can just see that factoring this out, we have r minus 1, r plus 1 equals 0. And so we have two potential values r is equal to 1, or r is equal to negative 1. And these two values here, r1, r equal to 1 and r equal to negative 1, then tell us that y1 equal to e to the rx, uh, sorry, e to the 1x, so just e to the x, and y2 equal to e to the negative x are solutions. And so, one can check if these are linearly independent, and you can use the Ronskin for that. If you, if you, we just do that quickly. The Ronskin of y1 and y2 here um, is just equal to this determinant, e to the x, so y1, and then y2, e to the negative x, uh, and then the derivative, e to the x, and then negative e to the negative x. And then here you'll just see that if I compute the determinant, I'm just going to get negative 1 minus 1, which is equal to negative 2. And since this is not equal to 0, uh, we get that y1 and y2 are linearly independent. OK. So what have we done? We found two linearly independent solutions to our equation, y1 and y2. And so the thing to do here is to just finish off by saying that our final solution, so the solution here, It's just a general linear combination of these two, e to the x, c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x. 
and that's it. Okay, now uh, just a few things to say here. It's always good to, to test. Uh, the nice thing about mathematics is one can test their solutions. So you can take this general linear combination and plug it directly back into your differential equation and check, do I get zero? If I plug in um, uh, the, the explicit expression for y into this equation here. Okay, let's, let's try another example here. Let's try and solve uh, this equation here. So again, we want to uh, try our substitution. And so we know that we're going to get a certain quadratic equation. So we know that making the substitution y equal to e to the rx here, uh, it's just going to give us that this is a, a solution. Uh, so this is a solution. if and only if r is a certain root to an, a certain quadratic equation, which in this case will just be r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 0. Okay, and again, we, can, uh, we need to find uh, what r is explicitly. So here we can just quickly see that this is r plus 1 squared equal to 0. And so just r is equal to negative 1, and that's our solution. So then we get from, but, but here we see something important. There's only one root to this equation, right? So what does this mean? It means that we're only going to get one solution. So we definitely know that y1 equal to e to the rx, which is going to be negative x now. This is definitely a solution. But we don't have any other roots. This is the only root. So our technique is only giving us one solution. And we said in the beginning that since this is a second order linear equation, we know that we need at least two linearly independent solutions in order to solve this equation. So we need to somehow, from this differential equation um, and this solution, build another solution. And luckily we have such a technique, and that's this technique here. This is uh, reduction of order. So we, we have already seen in a previous video that if we are given a solution y1 to uh, any different, every, any second order linear equation really, uh, then we can find another solution by solving this differential equation here. Okay. So let's, let's do exactly that on, on this case here uh, to produce the y2. So um, we know that our y2 here is going to be u times y1, uh, where u prime uh, has this form here. Okay, good. So let's solve. Well, let's find out what is u prime. So using uh, reduction of order, um, we will find we find y two, which is going to be equal to u times y one, where the u prime, so u prime here, is equal to one over y one squared. Uh, times e to the negative integral p uh, of x dx. Okay. So one must always just be a bit accurate here and identify, because this is the general form of the equation for reduction of order. And so we just need to identify what is p of x and what is q of x and be very careful to in doing so. So in this equation up here, uh, luckily it's already d immediately in this form where p of x in our, in our situation here um, is just going to be equal to uh, 2, directly equal to 2. But just, just for argument's sake, let's say we had, an, uh, we had a 3 here, just for argument's sake. Then we couldn't, uh, then p of x is not equal to 2, because we'd first have to divide this equation by 3 and actually get that it's um, 2 over 3. So uh, it's, uh, it's always important to just be careful when applying these kinds of methods here. Okay, so in our case, uh, p of x is equal to 2. And so let's check how this works. This here uh, is just going to say uh, 1 over, now let's, let's plug in uh, our value. So y1, we know already what y1 is. y1 is e to the negative x. So this is just going to be e to the negative x squared. And now we're going to multiply that by e to the negative, the integral of 2 uh, dx. Nice thing about this, this is going to just be equal to 1 over, now, 
uh, because I'm taking e to the negative x to the power of 2, this just becomes e to the negative 2x. And I'm then going to form the simplest uh, integral here, because remember, I just need one antiderivative here. So I'm going to get e to the uh, negative 2x. And the nice thing is this cancels out and gives us 1. And so using reduction of order, we have just found y prime equals 1. And so integrating both sides, we can take u to be equal to x. So this means that y2 equal to u times y1, which is just now, as we've calculated, equal to x times e to the negative x, is a solution. And so we get our final solution, y, um, is just equal to a general linear combination of these two. So it'll be c1 e to the negative x uh, plus c2x e to the negative x. And that will be our final solution to this equation. And again, um, the nice thing about mathematics is one can, can test if they've got the right solution. So you can take your uh, equation here, plug it back in, and, and see if you actually get uh, uh, zero. Okay, uh, let's just end with one last example, which is to solve um, this, this equation here. Okay. So using reduction of order again, um, so not reduction of order, using our technique, we want to try the substitution E equal to Rx, and this is going to give us a solution if and only if a certain quadratic equation is fulfilled, um, uh, satisfied. So this will be r squared plus 1 equals 0. And here, uh, we run into a very interesting situation because r is now going to be equal to i or r is equal to negative i. And the, the, what is the, the issue with, with our technique here and um, by the way, what is i? i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So um, what is the, the issue here? Well, if we had to say that y to the rx is a solution, then we have to say that y to the e to the ix is a solution. And this then means we need to know, uh, this, is, this is a little bit uh, weird because we're taking um, the exponent of a complex number. And what on earth could that be? Well, luckily, uh, this question has been thought of uh, a long time ago, and Euler's formula comes to the, the rescue. Um, so we have an exact formula for what is e to the ix. It's given exactly here. And so we can actually say what, what y is. So um, y to the ix is a solution, which means that if I take y equal to cos x plus i sine x, then this is, this is going to be a solution. Okay, great. Um, now we also have another root. So we have, um, we have that e to the i x is a solution. And also, let's say e, um, so let's call this y1, let's call this y2. Uh, so e to the negative i x, sorry, is a solution. And this is just going to be uh, equal to, so cos of negative x plus i sine of negative x. And here you'll see this just ends up being cos of x minus i sine of x. Okay. So we have these two solutions. Um, uh, but there's, there's still a bit of a problem here. Our, the solutions to our differential equation, they must be real valued functions. But this, this function here, y1, it has this complex part. If I plug in some x value, I'm going to get uh, a complex number. And I want explicitly a, a real solution to this, this equation. So the way to, to solve this problem is to, re to remember another general fact, that the linear combination, if I define uh, w1, for instance, equal to a half of, let's say, y1 plus y2, then because this is a general linear combination of solutions, it will again be a solution. So whatever this w1 is, it's going to be a, it will be a solution. So if we compute exactly what this is, we'll see here this is a half 
times uh, y1, which in this case is cos of x plus i sine of x uh, plus y2, which is also cos of x, but now minus i sine of x. And now you see the reason for taking this linear combination. Uh, it's because the i sine of x here is going to cancel with this one. And we're going to just end up with cos x being a solution here. Okay. So uh, taking w1 equal to cos x, this will be a solution to our differential equation. Nice. But also, um, we, we have now one real solution, but we need another. And uh, to form the other solution here, you can take uh, your w2 to be equal to negative i over 2 times, um, uh, let's see here, it'll be y1 plus minus I, y2, sorry. Okay, so how does this solve the problem? Because if I... Um, if I compute what this is, I get negative i over 2 times, uh, here it's just going to be, I'm going to copy it actually, I'm going to have exactly this. So I have exactly this, but the only difference is now I have uh, a minus here. So minus this. And so what we're going to um, have here is we're going to get um, that the cos x will cancel with this cos x here. And so what we end up having is negative uh, i over 2 times um, here uh, we're going to add, so we're going to get 2i uh, sine x, 2i sine x. And then uh, why did we choose negative i over 2? Well, this becomes clear now too. Because if I multiply these two numbers, um, negative i over 2 with 2i, then I'm going to get exactly 1. So ju ju just to show you that, negative i over 2 times 2i is equal to negative i times i. Uh, the 2's cancel, right? Um, and this is equal to, so since i is the square root of negative 1, i squared is negative 1, and then negative negative 1 is just equal to 1. Okay, good. So the result of this calculation is that we just get sine x, a solution. So that's um, uh, very nice because now we can solve the, the uh, equation fully and we can get that uh, our equation y is just a general linear combination of these two solutions. So um, uh, y is equal to c1 w1 plus c2 w2, which in this case is directly equal to c1 uh, cos x plus c2 sin x. And then that will solve our equation. Why? Because we've found two linearly independent solutions, cos x and sin x. And so uh, since we are dealing with the second order homogeneous equation, we've now found all solutions. Okay, in the next video, we'll uh, discuss how to solve um, the obvious generalization here, which is homogeneous linear constant um, equations with constant coefficients, but of arbitrary order. Okay, thank you.